let's start with a few words about me. I am Ilya. I am CTO and founder of uh, Beta Software. Uh, I have been working on creating various kinds of uh, fire application for the last uh, six or even seven years. Yeah, I'm passionate about uh, open source, about uh, creating uh, awesome stuff and uh, uh, obviously participating in various kinds of uh, conferences. Yeah, uh, I uh, presented uh, once at Dev Days when it was uh, in not virtual, uh, offline mode kind of, yeah. And also I participated in uh, some fire connectathons and during this connectathons, I created uh, a set of open source tools that I will demonstrate to you today. So let's start. Uh, today I will cover uh, four uh, kind of uh, topics. First of all, I will provide a kind of uh, high level uh, context uh, when and where you can use uh, questionnaire based forms maybe you don't need it you can keep uh, things uh, simple and it's fine and then we will review the form uh, life cycle to understand uh, uh, how some parts of sdc helps in uh, managing uh, forms and we have a close look on populate and extract operations from the sdc and in them there will be some additional bonus that you will see, yeah. Uh, okay, let's start with some uh, introductory. So uh, when you start creating your awesome application, uh, it starts usually very simple. You have a kind of user interface, you have a kind of fire server because now we on the dev days, we're talking about fire and it's obviously that uh, you're going to use some fire server. You just create the UI, you, you create some forms, you use your uh, preferred tools. Uh, it may be some JavaScript frameworks, uh, some, uh, I don't know, uh, libraries for mobile apps. Uh, and you just write your code, you create your forms, uh, some elements, uh, and uh, all uh, user interface are managed with uh, your code. It's uh, pretty fine. And if uh, you are not suffering with this approach, uh, please keep it as it is. Maybe you don't need some over sophistication and uh, you don't need something uh, more uh, complex. However, sometimes uh, things become uh, harder and uh, a bit more complicated. In uh, my case, uh, the app uh, start turning to a kind of uh, multi-tenant app and please let me provide a kind of high level overview of the app I'm talking about. Initially, it was uh, automatization for a check-in process and uh, it was a very simple process like a form where you can end, where a patient uh, that arrives to a hospital just enter uh, his or her name, uh, some demographics data and so on. Uh, then more hospitals start uh, uh, joining us. Uh, also, some uh, specialists uh, require uh, some uh, ch changes to the forms. For example, for physiotherapists, uh, there is one set of fields. For the oncologist, there is another set of fields. Uh, but uh, in general, uh, all, info all demographics information about name, uh, birth date, and uh, some similar stuff, it's the same for uh, the whole forms. So uh, they look very similar with uh, slightly, slightly difference one, one to another. So uh, it was hard to manage uh, via the code. And I start uh, thinking what uh, exists in the community and how I can uh, make this uh, flexibility. So uh, in this kind of situation, you may start thinking about five questionnaires. Yeah. And oh, uh, Initially, I faced this uh, task uh, while I was working with uh, Curate Health. And now uh, with the Severity Network, we continue working on these tools. And also uh, we're going to create more uh, uh, Georgia stuff on top of it, create some UIs, and maybe it will be a topic for uh, another presentation. Uh, so let's uh, continue with managing uh, questionnaires. Uh, unfortunately, questionnaire is not enough. Questionnaire only describes the uh, user interface and uh, uh, we can create uh, a 
set of questionnaires. Since questionnaire is just a data, we can uh, combine them using some tools over, uh, over the data. For example, extract some uh, questions embedded into another, it, that, that's fine. But uh, uh, the problem here is uh, how to insert uh, data in the questionnaire, how to insert data in the form, because uh, usually you have something in form to edit. It's only a small case when uh, you fill everything from scratch. Uh, for example, in my case, when a patient uh, uh, draw, uh, visit the hospital for the first time, uh, this patient have to fill all fields. But uh, then a patient visit another hospital and it's uh, uh, nice to uh, have all uh, data pre-populated in the form. And finally, once uh, the check-in is finished, all data should be extracted back to the system. So questioning is not enough here. And uh, that's how I uh, knew about SDC. Uh, on, uh, I think, uh, Tuesday, there was a presentation from Brian. Brian is here. Hi, Brian. Yeah, uh, about the st stretch da data capture. I uh, suggest you to uh, view this uh, session because it's a very good uh, overview of all elements and aspects of the SDC. Uh, now I, I will... Uh, also, on the slides, you can see link uh, to the SDC specification and the uh, thread at, uh, at the Zulip uh, fire chat. Uh, by the way, uh, this presentation is available at the comments uh, section of, uh, of the conference app. So uh, you can get presentation from there and uh, follow any link from the presentation. Yeah. So if you are interested in SDC, uh, First of all, uh, watch Brian's presentation that hopefully will be available soon. Yeah, uh, review the specification and join us on the uh, fire chat to uh, ask some questions. So what uh, SDC is? Kind of very high level overview. SDC covers lots of uh, additional features uh, that uh, required for uh, graceful form management. So first of all, it's a set of extensions that allow you to perform some advanced form rendering. For example, you can manage form layout, you can grow up elements, uh, display, it, uh, display it horizontally, vertically, and all other UI stuff. Also, another part of SDC covers uh, advanced form behavior and calculation. Uh, using SQL or Firepass, you can create embedded expression and perform some uh, calculation during the uh, fill in the form. For example, uh, you can calculate uh, BMI on fly or uh, whatever you want, perform some uh, sophisticated validation that involves uh, uh, values of multiple uh, uh, questions to be calculated and so on. Another interesting part is uh, adaptive forms that uh, allow you to up update the questionnaire on fly and not expose the whole questionnaire for the end user, because in some cases, uh, questionnaire may be part of intellectual property and you don't want to share the whole questionnaire, only small part of it. Uh, and the final, uh, and the two final elements, form population and form data extraction is uh, that uh, I will present today to you. Yeah, and uh, uh, I will focus on them during the, my presentation. So uh, I hope now you have some uh, ideas uh, when and where you can use uh, questionnaires, uh, what is a SDC implementation guide, what it covers, and uh, you have some useful links to follow them and review this stuff. Uh, let's proceed with the next uh, step and review the form uh, life cycle. So uh, since it's a... Uh, I, unfortunately, I can't present a very uh, complex, sophisticated flow because uh, I, I will not fit in such short uh, timeline, uh, but uh, feel free to uh, reach me to ask any additional questions at the community topic I have created. And uh, maybe we can schedule another session and uh, try to implement more sophisticated flows. But for now, I will uh, work only with a patient form. So, it's a simplification, but uh, the techniques that I will demonstrate will work with uh, any kind of fire resources, with set of resources, and uh, everything is working in the production. So believe me, uh, 
uh, all, all this approach is pretty scalable and uh, may be used far far more uh, than just for editing uh, patient information. Yeah, and let's start with uh, reviewing the form uh, life cycle. So uh, there is a file resource, it's a patient in our case, and uh, there is a questionnaire that basically describes the form. What elements should be displayed? Uh, and we can uh, write a code that uh, transforms this uh, declarative description of the questionnaire to the user interface. Then we need to insert data somehow to this user interface. And uh, FIRE uh, provides a questionnaire response resource that uh, should be used as a response to the questionnaire. So it's a kind of uh, straightforward way to perform an initial data to the form. So we just create a patient, apply some operation for this patient and get the questionnaire response that uh, represents this patient. Obviously we need some metadata from the questionnaire to perform this transformation. Uh, once uh, we apply some changes uh, via the user interface, for example, change some patient demographics, patient name, I don't know, whatever else, so we get a questionnaire response as a result of uh, this form manipulation. Uh, after we get this questionnaire response, uh, we need to return all these changes back to the patient. Uh, it's... Uh, also, it may not be uh, just patient, again, uh, it may be any set of resources. So uh, I found that uh, it may be useful to perform another uh, transformation from questionnaire response to a transaction bundle that will be executed over the fire server and apply all changes to the resources you would like to change. Again, we need a questionnaire response. We need some maybe metadata from the questionnaire to perform this transformation. And once the transformation is done, we just apply in this bundle and update the patient details. Uh, sounds uh, very simple. Let's see it in action. So uh, here you can see the patient resource. Uh, there is a name, uh, gender, telecom, birth date, some other stuff. Uh, also, uh, you can see the uh, fire uh, questionnaire uh, that describes uh, a form for editing this patient. And let's apply some uh, changes, for example. Uh, uh, oh, it's a typo here. Yeah, for example, change the name of the some uh, field. It applied life on the form. We can, for example, duplicate some field. And uh, it's applying life. Yeah, let's vary all these changes. Uh, okay, uh, we have uh, data in the form. Uh, the form is driven by the questionnaire. We can apply sign some changes, for example, change a birth date. And let's go to the bottom of the uh, this uh, user interface. You see the questionnaire response that I get as a result of updating the form. Let's update uh, birth date one more time you see that it changed in the third of January right now. And it is a, a representation of the form in the uh, fire questionnaire. Uh, here you see a mapper that uh, I will uh, talk uh, later in more detailed way. And finally, here is a bundle transaction that uh, will be applied to the fire server to update the patient. Now you see that uh, the birth date here the first of January and uh, here the third, we apply in this bundle and uh, the cycle is closed. All data returned to the patient and uh, uh, it works. Yeah. Uh, now when you have, uh, uh, oh, it's uh, may maybe there is some question and uh, I would like to answer them right now. Because uh, now we will uh, start, uh, have a close look to populate and extract and maybe if somebody would like to ask some details, it's a good time uh, to do it. Okay. As a speaker allowed, you can unmute yourself and ask questions. Yeah, 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 yeah. Feel free to unmute yourself and ask. Let's make the session more fun. Yeah. Oh, uh, I don't even know that uh, there is such option to unmute. Maybe in this case, I, I will, uh, I would uh, unmute on some sessions <laughs> also. Yeah. yeah, not all the sessions you can unmute. Um, I guess the, that demo that you were just walking through, 
Um, is that the stuff that you put on GitHub? Is that open source as well? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, the, the demo that I'm demonstrating is uh, I posted a link uh, to the comment thread and uh, also all links will be in the presentation. So you will be able to launch uh, all the setup uh, locally. Uh, I think the uh, main requirement that you have to set up is a Docker. But uh, once you set up Docker, uh, yeah. all other stuff is pretty simple to set up. You, you will need to get some licenses, but it's very simple for the file server. Yeah. Okay, let's uh, continue with uh, populate and extract. And uh, yeah, uh, don't hesitate to ask uh, questions during uh, my presentation because, yeah, uh, it's not uh, very obvious uh, things happening. and. Uh, uh, I'm ready to answer all your questions. That's why all of us here. Yeah. Uh, let's uh, continue talking about uh, population. Now uh, we will have a very close look to this uh, top part of the form lifecycle and top part of the user interface. I will present you and see how what extensions exist, uh, what extensions defined by SDC used to get additional information from the questionnaire to perform this uh, uh, populate operation that transform patient to the questionnaire response. Uh, so uh, let's start with, uh, again, a, a very high level overview of the population from the SDC, what kind of uh, population uh, exists and when it may be useful for you to choose uh, other uh, type of uh, population. So. Uh, uh, in my uh, demo example, only five path based population is implemented, uh, but uh, there are two more uh, uh, types of population. The first one is observation based. It's uh, the simplest one. And uh, uh, I think you could easily implement it in your system if uh, your forms are limited only by observation. For example, you're gathering some patient demographics data, uh, you're gathering, I don't know, uh, weight, height, some blood samples uh, of blood analysis that patients perform or whatever else. And uh, since all the stuff perfectly mapped to the observation, you can just use this approach. It's very simple and you could find it uh, at the SDC specification. Uh, another approach is the structure map based. Uh, it's a very, it's the most powerful uh, from the one hand side, but from the other hand, it's uh, the most uh, sophisticated way. You need to write a, a mapper using a structure map or using fire mapping language that uh, perform this uh, transformation. So you accept the patient, create uh, this trans, uh, transformation logic and get the questionnaire response. Uh, so uh, the uh, and uh, maybe it's overpowerful because uh, structure map and uh, 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 fire mapping language allow transform from any resource to any resource, but uh, here task is very limited. So I decided that fire pass is more than enough. And let's see in action how fire pass uh, population works. Yeah, let's have a close look to the questionnaire and let's review some extensions. Let's start with uh, uh, launch context extension. This extension uh, defines a set of uh, variables that uh, required to perform in uh, to perform the population. In our case, uh, the only one required uh, required variable is uh, launch by patient, and the type of this uh, uh, variable is patient. So to perform uh, populate operation, we need to pass a patient this one to uh, the populate operation. Then let's review uh, the logic of uh, fields uh, population. Uh, there is another useful extension called uh, initial expression that allow you to define a fire pass that uh, will be executed over uh, the whole environment. And uh, obviously the uh, variables from launch context uh, will be available at this uh, fire pass uh, variable. So we can uh, write uh, some expression and the result of this expression will be used as uh, initial data of the form. Uh -huh. Let's add uh, one more field. As you can see, there is a 
gender of the patient in the resource, but uh, this field is missing in the form. Let's add this field and perform a correct population for it. Yeah. So now uh, it has the right uh, title, but the uh, type and the uh, population is incorrect. Let's try to fix it. First of all, the type is string. Link ID is uh, gender. Now you see that it's keep uh, changing. And finally, we need to fix the fire pass expression here. Yeah, finally, the form uh, get uh, the right value from the gender. We can edit it, we can uh, uh, do whatever we want with uh, this form. Let's continue with uh, another example. Uh, in some cases, uh, you need to uh, manage uh, lists in your form. So in this case, there is a form that allow you to change uh, patient uh, telecom. For example, we can add another phone number. You know, and let's apply this changes, sorry. Yeah. You can see that this form is added and let's see how uh, we can manage lists with uh, SDC and uh, how to form populations of a list. So uh, let's see the extension called item context. Uh, so uh, here, here is, a, is one small trick. So uh, right now uh, item context is uh, replacing by item population context and uh, maybe item extraction context, maybe Brian could uh, advise here. <laughs> uh, I'm not aware of the, uh, the latest changes in the specification, but uh, in the current version of the spec that available online, it's still item context, but uh, when maybe if somebody will uh, would like to see uh, this presentation in the future, be aware that uh, this uh, name could be changed. Uh, but anyway, uh, the idea of item context is to define a fire pass expression that uh, points to some array. In our case, we are pointing to telecom array and uh, this fire pass expression uh, loads this array and the uh, population engine could iterate over it. Uh, it sees that it's, there is a three elements. So uh, three elements of answers will be created. Uh, that's why we have we see three elements in the form. Then inside of each field, we can uh, still use initial expression, but in this initial expression, we uh, got uh, a, a kind of uh, context. So this expression will be used over uh, the uh, specific element for the first element for uh, this one. The second element will be applied with, again with this expression. You get the uh, second element of the form and so on and so on. So we are defining only the small part of the firepass expression that will be used to uh, get data from a specific element. That's how we extract use of the uh, telecom and that's how we extract value. For example, we can change it to a system just for demo purpose and see that uh, instead of number, uh, the system is uh, displayed there. Let's return back to web. So basically, when you need to define a list of elements and populate it, you are providing item context that pointing to you to a list and uh, inside uh, this group uh, where you use item context, in the initial expression, you can uh, write expression only for a specific element. It's, very powerful and uh, useful. Uh, so I think it's uh, maybe uh, a good time for another questions if uh, somebody uh, have it about the population process. Yeah, uh, just small notes. So I think we meet SQL on fire as a way to populate data. I know it's not very popular, but I think it, it, it may be very useful for pre-populating. Uh, I think uh, the approach is uh, pretty uh, ex uh, ex uh, expandable, I think, uh, because uh, you can see that the type of uh, the type is expression and the expression has uh, 
language and uh, it could be uh, uh, when we start uh, working on the population process we were thinking maybe we should place something like text javascript here and just uh, perform a kind of javascript operation that uh, performs this uh, extraction so uh, uh, right now in the sdc uh, text fire pass and text uh, sql only available but i think it may be uh, extended if you would like Nice. Yeah, so there's along with that, so with the launch context, you can also provide a fire, a fire, path, fire path query, but a fire query. Um, and you can oh. also use that same stuff to go and grab a search bundle. So if your questionnaire has got a whole bunch of stuff you want to go and preload, um, so you wanted to get um, not just the patient, which was a launch context, you wanted to go and get the patient's um, related persons, or their last six months of medications, or what are their active conditions, you can put those in a bundle, attach that, and then interact with that particular set using Firepath expressions. And also that variable language that you've got there, which is similar to item context, you can actually go and do fire queries with that as well. So you've got a, a couple of options in there. Yeah, yeah. So, thank you, Brian. It's very important note. Uh, unfortunately, it's uh, missing in my presentation. Yeah. Uh, however, it's a very, uh, uh, from the one hand, it's a very useful feature that you definitely could load uh, any information uh, for, through the bundle request. But uh, as I said initially, uh, I decided that it will not fit in my short timeline. Yeah. Uh, but uh, feel free to ask, for example, at chats, uh, and maybe we can uh, schedule a, a very specific session with most interesting uh, person and uh, well, let's add get all the stuff live. Yeah. Because for pre-feeding, I think that some powerful fire service who can run SQL may be a very good option. And from yeah. specification point of view, it would be nice to have this extension point so we can uh, change engine for pre-fetch and pre-fill. Yeah, sure. Thank you, sorry. Yeah, yeah uh, that's fine. I like this presentation. We actually have uh, uh, chatting and uh, it's much close to live events. So we are taking advantages of uh, uh, live communication and also we can communicate with Brian that, uh, in Australia. <laughs> That's quite a fun. Okay, uh, let's proceed with uh, extract. And uh, for the extract is uh, the most, uh, is uh, the stuff that uh, may be not fully covered uh, well by the SDC specification. And also it uh, uh, requires uh, uh, a lot of uh, knowledge in some fire areas to perform. Uh, so uh, again, let's see uh, on the schema, uh, extraction uh, defines the process that happens on the bottom of the schema and on the bottom of the uh, interface. Uh, I'm showing you this one. Uh, and the uh, extraction allow you to define how to uh, return changes from questionnaire response back to the set of resources used uh, to populate data to the form. So I see it, uh, I think that it's a very convenient and useful way to use a transaction bundle. So I place it it's in the schema. However, uh, it uh, may be done uh, a bit different. Let's see uh, what kind of uh, extraction uh, defined at the SDC. So again, there is an observation-based approach. It's a kind of additional to the observation-based population. It's uh, pretty simple and uh, Again, the only disadvantage is that only restricted to the observation. But uh, if you're working with the observation, I am really happy for you and uh, you can do it much more simpler that uh, I am demonstrating today. Uh, another way of extraction is uh, definition-based. And uh, unfortunately, the main disadvantage of this approach uh, is uh, that uh, the structure of the questionnaire should follow uh, the structure of the fire resource you would like to extract data to. So for example, if you are uh, creating uh, a form, uh, I don't know, for a patient, you have a very uh, straightforward way of uh, representing fields. The structure of the patient resource 
should be mirrored to the to your questionnaire. That may not be very useful, and uh, since this applies some limitation on the, on the user interface, uh, it, it uh, do not fit uh, the business needs for product. Uh, I uh, I am developing this stuff for. So uh, in my case, it's uh, very important to create uh, to uh, create any kind of form layout, uh, and it's not acceptable to follow some structures defined from Fire or whatever else. Because uh, uh, UI and UX matters, and uh, uh, that's why we decided not to use uh, definition-based approach for extraction. But it's very uh, again, it's. Uh, uh, easy to understand, just read the specification and maybe in your case it will work or maybe uh, there is a kind of tricks that uh, allow you to resolve the limitation mentioned. But let's focus on the uh, final one, the structure map based. Again, uh, it's the most sophisticated way. There is two options. Uh, you can define a structure map or you can use a fire mapping language. And uh, there is one big problem with fire mapping language. Uh, maybe it's uh, it's kind of uh, good idea to have a, a specific talk to compare different approach in mapping, uh, show some benefits, the disadvantages, and it will take a lot of time. Uh, so I, I will focus only the uh, one problem that critical for me. Uh, and unfortunately, I can't find any uh, open source implementation of fire mapping language. I asked on my uh, previous uh, uh, presentation during some another fire event, and the only thing that uh, I got uh, is uh, a fire mapping language implementation for Wonk fire server. So if you are using Wonk, maybe you are lucky and you can use it. Uh, uh, but it's not uh, a case, unfortunately, uh, for me. Yeah, and uh, once I got that, uh, uh, th there is no uh, implementation that uh, I may may use. Oh, oh, and again, if something changed and I'm not aware of any updates or maybe some projects, uh, I'll really appreciate if you could send me some links, and uh, I will continue my experiments with uh, fire mapping language. Uh, however, I found this, uh, uh, yeah. There is a Java implementation. So Graham's done one um, mm. with, the, uh, with the happy set. So okay. I'll, I'll find something. Another, another, another note that Jute is better than Fire mapping language. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. Yeah, it's, it's a kind of uh, holy war uh, topic. What mapper is uh, better? So, yeah, as I said, uh, uh, there are lots of uh, advantages and disadvantages, and uh, it's uh, a great idea for another topic, kind of uh, uh, comparison of different uh, mapping approaches. Yeah. So finally, I decided to use Jude. Here is a link to the open source implementation of the Jude uh, uh, mapping language, and uh, it works uh, uh, very well. Let's see it uh, in action, and uh, maybe you will get why I like Jude uh, so much. So uh, when you define, uh, let's return to the first demo because it's a bit easier to understand. And we need to apply some changes to trigger the render of this. Yeah. Okay. So uh, when you need to define a mapper with Jude. Uh, you just need to create a shape of uh, the data structure you would like to get. It's uh, totally declarative in co comparison with uh, uh, fire mapping language when you need to write all of uh, directives. And uh, for me, it's hard to, uh, to be honest, yeah, uh, uh, I, I don't uh, really uh, can understand how to write uh, fire mapping language uh, expressions. <laughs> and I found that uh, this approach uh, a bit easier for me. Yeah, so uh, when you're creating uh, a Jute mapper, you just need to create a structure of the uh, resources you would like to get. So in our case, we are creating a transaction bundle. We are defining one request that perform a patch operation over the patient resource. And then we need to uh, provide a kind of patient ID. And here is a kind of first uh, trick in the uh, 
straight uh, data capture. There is uh, another extension that I didn't mention during um, my presentation about the population and form appearance. There is extension uh, uh, hidden. And if we turn it to true, the field will exist in the form. The, firm, the field will exist in the questionnaire response, but it will not be visible on the UI. In my interface, I uh, make it transparent just to, you know, for demonstration purpose. It's a kind of uh, official uh, workaround for passing additional uh, data to the form, for example, some IDs or some other details that uh, are not, uh, uh, that should not be displayed to user, but they are required for, uh, uh, for the sum form logic. So th that's how we are uh, passing patient ID through this whole engine. And uh, I can execute a, a fire pass expression that uh, loads uh, specific question by its uh, link ID and embed it to, uh, to the string in this case. The same approach for name, uh, for family name, birthday, and uh, let's add uh, a gender here. I hope you remember that on the previous step, we added gender to the form, but uh, it's missing on the batch request. Again, you can see live that uh, Gender is here, but uh, it's uh, the wrong uh, extraction uh, pass here. Let's use correct link ID and correct type. Yeah. Now you see that uh, gender is successfully populated to the patient batch request. Uh, for example, we can apply some changes. I don't know. And uh, all this stuff is updated on the fire resource or not. Maybe I miss something. Yeah, it's updated. And let's see how Jude allow you to map uh, some uh, repeatable elements. For example, our phone numbers. So Jude provides a set of uh, directives that allow you to work with uh, lists to perform some uh, calculation over lists. And uh, uh, there is such detective, uh, de directive as map that accept a list. I Again, I perform fire pass expression to uh, get answers of uh, this group, uh, answers of this group with a list. So it uh, enters the map directive. Then with S, I define a variable that will be used uh, for uh, specific element from a list and uh, again apply uh, fire pass expression on top of this uh, element of the list extracting phone type and phone number. Uh, you see that uh, this uh, approach with JUT mapping is very similar to the approach of fire based uh, population. So uh, there, is, uh, there is a field for example, font type, and you are defining the expression on this field to get it uh, from the original resource. The same approach here. Uh, you are defining the result data structure. You are defining uh, the, uh, uh, the transaction bundle. And when you need to embed uh, some data, you are defining a fire pass expression that load it from the uh, questionnaire response. So uh, that's how uh, extraction works in uh, my case. And uh, if you have some questions, you may ask them. And I'm not sure, do we have some extra time or the time is out right now? We have five minutes. Oh, okay. So yeah, uh, if somebody has some questions, you may ask now. And uh, uh, the presentation is uh, pretty over. The only small uh, part is uh, left. So. Are there any questions in chat in QA session? So let me see the QA session. Hoover is not updating. So no questions in Hoover, yeah. but we can discuss here. <laughs> uh, I prefer to uh, demonstrate uh, the, the final secret okay. element, do. and then we have a, we may have a discussion. It's a assemble operation that is not uh, publicly introduced yet. Uh, it exists uh, like a Jura ticket right now. I worked on this on the, one of the 
uh, previous uh, connectatons and what this uh, assemble operation uh, allow you to do. So uh, as, as I initially uh, said, uh, in my case, uh, there are a set of uh, slightly different questionnaires that shares some common elements, for example, patient demographics data. And the assemble is a way to uh, create a questionnaire on fly based on another questionnaires. So there is a, a, an extension uh, sub, uh, now it's called sub questionnaire, but it may be changed still in the process and uh, uh, still in discussion phase uh, that uh, allow you to define a canonical link to another questionnaire. And uh, in my case, I uh, create a link to the questionnaire from the first uh, demo that uh, uh, represent form for uh, patient uh, first name, last name, gender, whatever else. Then I, in the second demo, I uh, demonstrate form for editing telecoms and I embed in this questionnaire after uh, this one. So uh, both question, uh, so I define the questionnaire as uh, a combination of two and other questionnaires by this uh, sub questionnaire extension. As a result, you can see a form that consists of uh, two different forms. So it's a kind of combination. Uh, the same uh, thing uh, happens with uh, mappers. So uh, for the first questionnaire was defined this mapper. For, another, for the second questionnaire, there was another mapper. And uh, now I, I got uh, the form that allow me to edit uh, both uh, parts of the patient resource. Let's apply some changes here and let's, uh, for example, remove some phone number, change another one. And once I apply, so for demo purposes, I separated uh, this uh, request. And once I apply all these changes, you can see that uh, both uh, portion of data are updated for uh, demographics part, for telecom part. Yeah. Uh, so uh, if you are interested in all this uh, stuff, uh, feel free to join uh, questionnaire thread on Zulip. Feel free to even jump on uh, work uh, questionnaire work group session. And uh, yeah, uh, that's I think all I would like to demonstrate. Here's a link to this uh, demo app. Also the link at the comment se uh, section. And uh, yeah, uh, we have like two minutes and we can have some uh, discussion questions uh, whatever else yeah nikolai you would like to discuss something yeah i would to... like to discuss a lot but so the first of all uh, i think it's a uh, notes for brian as well uh, i wonder that there is no composability yes for the questionnaire out of the box because it's obvious that you want to build some pieces of question and compose them and uh, it would be nice to see it on specification as well i see a lot of extensions maybe bringing to the core because it looks a little bit ugly and uh, question about uh, the pre-filling and the mapping looks like it's the same yes so potentially you can do pre-filling yeah jute as well yeah and another comment that what we use for similar cases, we create a custom resource and this, and then we get rid of this terrible uh, fire pass expression, as you see, a couple, which takes a couple of lines. So, <clears throat> but I think this is topic for the maybe next meetup again. Maybe yeah. Let's organize meetup about the questionnaire because there's a lot of interest around building this low code form builders around fire. Yeah. Yeah, and I think we can learn a lot from open eye, open air. Yeah, and they have very similar uh, pieces. They, uh, as far as I know, they had very powerful user interface to create all this stuff, and uh, it's uh, a kind of uh, desirable desirable features for lots of uh, fire uh, community participants who are not uh, close to code. Yeah, the most fundamental part they, they have, it's uh, templates and templates is like uh, questionnaire definitions. And then you can, uh, and they have this composability of templates. So you can build any form 
from templates and templates operate archetypes which kind of a little bit smaller than resources but yeah <clears throat> yes something that we may learn from them yeah 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 it, it would be nice to uh, have uh, a very uh, technical low level meetup because uh, there was a meetup about uh, sdc but it, uh, i participated it was a bit uh, high level and uh, i do, don't even show something like this but uh, yeah it uh, i really uh, appreciate if we can have something uh, to talk about code about implementation not just see the interface but actually play with this interface decompose it apply some changes for example maybe let's yeah. try to commit people right here brian would you like to organize a meetup around all of these topics like spend three hours discussing uh, yeah i'd be happy to participate in that sure <laughs> let's let's find the time which is convenient for all of us and maybe yeah because uh, yeah there's a lot of interest uh, now we have a new buzzword low code and everybody is trying to do the low code and i think the questionnaire is a is a really low code <laughs> yeah Okay, guys, so we are out of time. Thank you, Ilya. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Yeah, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.